Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're gonna to be looking at a long question for microeconomics. This is from the 2019 exam, set one. Question number one. Here we go. Uh, yes, that's awesome. This question starts off with Philip. They're the only gas station in a small town and they're earning economic profits. Let's start off by drawing the graph. Downward sloping demand curve equals average revenue and price with a marginal revenue curve below that demand curve. Draw your Nike swoosh marginal cost. From there, find the profit maximizing quantity where MR equals MC. Drop down, there's your quantity, that's the profit maximizing quantity, and go up to demand to get the price. Since this firm is earning economic profits, you will have the average total cost below that point there on the demand curve. Draw in that ATC last based on whether the firm is earning profits, breaking even, or losing money. In this case, it's profit, so you need a low average total cost curve. So that gives us part one and two of this question. The next thing we need to do is find the deadweight loss for this monopoly. In order to find that, look at the profit maximizing quantity where this firm is producing. At that profit maximizing quantity, you will find the marginal cost of that quantity up above on the marginal cost curve. Then you find the marginal benefit of that quantity. The marginal benefit for a good that has no externalities is found at the demand curve. So we have from that profit maximizing quantity two points, one at the marginal cost curve and one above at the demand curve. The third point for your dead weight loss triangle is the allocatively efficient point. You find that where demand equals the marginal cost curve or the marginal cost equals price as is often said in the rubrics for FFRQs. Those three points give you a triangle of dead weight loss. If there were numbers here, you might be asked to calculate it. You don't have to at this point. For part four, we need to find the largest quantity where this firm breaks even or earns zero economic profits. In order to find that, you just find the point where the average total cost curve equals the demand. Drop down to the axis there, and there is your break even quantity. It's where the average total cost equals the demand or the price. In part B, Philip opens up a new lease, increasing their fixed costs. We now have to take a look at what that will do to the dead weight loss and the profit. For the dead weight loss, we have to explain. Here's the impact of changing fi uh, fixed cost on a firm. It shifts the average total cost upward, and that's it. That is the only thing it does. So when you shift that average total cost upward, the dead weight loss doesn't move because the dead weight loss is based on the allocatively efficient point and the marginal cost and the marginal benefit or the demand curve at the profit maximizing quantity. Since the profit maximizing quantity doesn't change since the marginal cost didn't move, there is no change to dead weight loss. So the answer here is no change because the marginal cost didn't change. For part B, I, I, we're going to look at the impact here on profit. Here is the profit that we had before the increase in average total costs. When you increase the average total cost, since the marginal cost doesn't change, the profit maximizing quantity doesn't change. But that average total cost curve has increased, decreasing the profit. In fact, the way I drew it here, they went from a profit to an economic loss. For part C, we're looking at what must be true if this firm continues to operate after a decrease in the demand for gasoline. The implication here is that the profits don't really exist anymore. We know from the previous question that the profits have at least decreased and potentially this firm is earning economic losses. What must be true? Well, what must be true is that they aren't ready to shut down. And as you should have learned before, that a shutdown point is when the price falls below the average variable cost at the profit maximizing quantity. 
So if this firm is continuing to operate, then the price must be above the average variable cost at that profit maximizing quantity. Just state that and you'll get your point here. For CII, we're gonna go back to the graph. I wanna show you, you don't have to draw this, what happens when there's a decrease in demand. The decrease in demand shifts the demand curve and dragging with it the marginal revenue curve to the left. That changes the output and price. We have a new MR equals MC quantity at a lower quantity than what we had before. And thanks to the shift in the demand curve to the left, we have a new lower price. So the answer here is that both decrease. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are definitely on your way to acing your next economics exam. If you want to support this channel, make sure you like and subscribe below. Then head over to reviewecon.com where there are lots of review activities and games to help you practice the skills you've been learning in economics. If you want to support this channel even more, make sure you head over to reviewecon.com and purchase the total review packet with everything you need to know for the AP microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. Thank you. I'll see you next time.